I'm going to sharpen my Puko up and I'm going to sharpen it up with this method which is basically an old worn belt from the grinder clamped in on a piece of marine ply. I'll show you my technique now and um, I'll be going through all the grits and you'll be surprised what a good job it does. Put the water This grit's a 120. Pretty rough.
Now this is the last one. This is a Warren 600. And you could strop it on leather. After this it'll probably be sharp enough. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it over my micro mesh strops. And this time, unlike yesterday, when I did a quick top up on my carving axe, I'm going to get them wet. Oh yeah, get it wet. And let's face it, we all like to get it wet. And if there's any kids watching this and don't know what I'm on about, you go into the pool on a Saturday morning. Always remember to do the tip. so it shaves without stropping. Back to the strops. So I did explain these are micro mesh which are uh, a very high quality grade of wet and dry. So although that says 1800 it's not actually 1800 it's probably more the normal stuff like a 400. But I'm going to go through them anyway. Not that one stay. Now, I've got every kind of sharpening gadget known to man. My preferred off the shelf, a DMT. I got a 10 inch double sided DMT stone. And I like to finish off on a 6000 grit ice bear stone. But I have gone to like this method. and the fact that I'm not resting over the work area because I'm sticking it in the vise it's just the right height I'm finding this one quite aggressive I think what it is with the micro mesh, they've got more grit per square inch or square centimetre than your cheaper stuff. So when you're, when you're using it, the lines are a lot closer together. This does feel quite rough. feels rough but it gives a pretty even finish yeah see the water doesn't doesn't stay on it very well
because it's totally awesome. Watch his Laz then. I love Laz, he's great. If you don't watch Laz Survivor Russia, you should. He's totally awesome. I watch quite a lot of YouTube and there's a few people on there which I gotta say thank you to not that I directly know them but I watch them a lot and I think they're great Lars is one Joe Robinette Joe is just so natural he's great and he's living in the environment which I wish I was living in Lonnie and Connie from Far North Bushcraft and Survival. Some good knowledge there. I love watching them. Zach Fowler. Zach Fowler is great. They're not that keen on all the killing and the survival challenges, but it's a survival challenge, so that's that. Yeah, Zach's great. I love watching Zach. I can't think of anybody else. And I know I watch loads. Oh, Dave Whipple. Dave's great. I like Dave. So, are you getting bored yet watching me do this? What's oh, coming along nice now? Oh, who can forget? The boys from DBK, they're great, they're a good laugh. I used to watch Survivor Lily, but I can't, I can't anymore. She totally trashed the Falcon Even S1, and that was the end of that. I thought it was a crap knife. Oh my god. So. I had to stop watching, I can't watch anymore. Oh, and good old Uncle Dave, of course. Dave Canterbury, the Pathfinder School. Mr. Phillips and his friends. I like to thank my dog, my cat, my raccoon. Simon bloke in the woods. Hi Simon, I hope you're watching. Neil. Neil from Greencraft. I've known Neil years and he's a top guy. And he's a bloody good chef too. As I say, don't neglect the tip. You could, you could sharpen the whole knife doing it this way on strops, make them bigger, but you're a lot quicker when you're pushing and you're pulling. I'm going to carry on you now doing a bit more. I'll get back to you. I'm on the final stop now. 12,000 it says on it. It's very fine. I keep one set of micro mesh strops for the axe. And I keep another set, the finer set. The gradings are very close together. So I'll say one for the axe, and this is my knife set. Mm. 
Oh shit. See, it's got sharp now. I've got to be careful. Less pressure. Sharper than Ricky Gervais's tongue. I get the strap out now. Straps and vice, basically, that's all it is. Is a nice piece of leather on top of a piece of marine ply. Stacky blue paste. First thing. Stanley blade. Get all the shit off from last time. Finally rub it in. You can apply as much pressure as you feel comfortable with. But remember, with a zero scandy grind, if you do it on a loose belt, you will round the edge. So the whole idea with a zero scandy grind is to be like a chisel for cutting wood. Now I've done this and I've slipped. And I had a lovely cut from it. So, careful, because I should know better. Now, there's a few schools of thought on this. Some people say just do a few strops, and other people say do shed fulls of strops. I think I'm somewhere in between. Always remember, don't neglect the tip. Just run the flat on there now. Get any crap off. Shine my nickel silver up a bit. doesn't just sharpen, it makes things pretty. I'm not going to have any hair in my hands. Oh, that's sharp as hell. Well, I hope you didn't find that too boring. 
I have tried to talk through it, so I've got something to listen to, apart from just watching some bloke strop in a bloody knife. You can't fail doing it this way. You will get a good edge. As long as you maintain that bevel flat, you'll be fine. Well, thanks for watching, if you've managed to stay with me the whole time. So this video will be over two days. I had to go yesterday because I was going to the cinema. I went to see Captain Marvel. It was good, but it was no Ragnarok. Ta-da!